you're starting to see the winter and late fall months approaching, which means people are doing more things indoor. And then you have the real issue of 60 million people in this country who are not vaccinated, who are eligible to be vaccinated. We were stuck at around 70,000 new cases a day. The latest counts is now into the 80s. Take it from the man who's been attacked for being a scientist. NBC News data showing over half of our country now seeing an uptick in new cases. Over the past two weeks, new cases in the state of Vermont have jumped 60 percent. And across New England, cases have risen in every state but Connecticut. Back with us tonight at a critical time, Dr. Erwin Redliner, founding director of Columbia's National Center for Disaster Preparedness. He advises us on public health. In his spare time, he's a professor of pediatrics at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Doctor, as no one needs to remind you, Vermont was a model of mitigation in New England. They are currently reporting a 72 percent vaccination rate. So can you tell us why the resurgence there? And if it's happening there, uh, God forbid, states like North and South Dakota, uh, uh, Mississippi, Alabama and the like. Right, Brian, we're in a very, very difficult and precarious situation <clears throat> as far as what we might be expecting over this next couple of months, as Dr. Fauci said. And don't forget, you know, state of Vermont's got about 630,000 people in it. If it's 72 percent vaccinated, we're talking about 150 to 170,000 people not vaccinated. And here we come now rolling into the winter time. The winter time, I mean, the coronavirus could not wait for winter. We have people indoors much, much more. We have family gatherings for the holidays. We have possible increases in virus transmissibility and growth during the winter. And we have all this uh, pool of unvaccinated people. I mean, the virus, if it was a you or me, we'd be completely excited. This is our season. The frustrating thing too, Brian, is what we can do is we can vaccinate more. This is the big weapon, the ultimate tool to keeping you from getting sick and keeping your friends, relatives, neighbors, and communities safe. And this is still, in my view, Brian, pretty slow going. And I'm worried about this next couple of months. So uh, today's news, the FDA, st don't stop me if you've heard this before, on the verge of approving the Pfizer vaccine, uh, no questions asked for all American adults for their booster. I am guessing that approval in this case means that horrendous term, emergency use authorization, the term upon which the anti-vaxxers base their criticism that it's somehow an experimental vaccine. Has anyone in the United States government had the idea of changing that term, giving it a new designation, or are we that unable to get out of our own way? Well, I don't know whether people are actually thinking about that, Brian, but it's a darn good idea. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if that's your excuse for not getting vaccinated, that it has this particular designation, you know, it's pathetic in a way. I don't know how to be, uh, you know, more polite about it, but it's a sad state of affairs. The fact is that if you had your two vaccines of the uh, Moderna or Pfizer variety, and it's more than six months since you got it, your immunity level has been dropping. There's no question about that. And the booster shot will get it right back up to where it needs to be. But the problem is, of course, for the people that have already gotten vaccinated, getting a booster shot is a very logical next step. But we still have millions. And Fauci said 60 million. I think it's maybe closer to 100 million Americans who've not gotten vaccinated, not even their first shots. So it's a little early to be speaking to them uh, about the boosters, Brian. But they, they need to wake up and smell the roses here. And the roses are horrible and they're dangerous. And they mean that you, the unvaxxed, may be in for a very rough and dangerous winter of disease and fatalities. And that's just the way it is. Uh, stay with me for this uh, uh, analogy, but friends of mine who are first responders say the invention of Narcan has made 
drug abuse more brazen. It has changed the notion of consequences because Narcan is a miracle drug. We've seen it bring people right back to life. Is that your fear? The relationship between this new uh, drug at $600 a throw that you can take as treatment versus the prophylactic vaccine uh, to prevent getting sick and hospitalized? You know, for doctors and people in the medical profession, Brian, this is a very tough situation to sort out because I've been talking about getting a medication that you could take orally to treat uh, the uh, COVID uh, virus is a game changer. It would be a game changer and it is a game changer. The problem, because it can save lives, that's it. You get symptoms, you test positive for COVID, here's a prescription, you take it to your pharmacy, take it for five days, and your symptoms should be gone. The problem is we don't want, we don't want people to think, oh, well, now that we have an oral medication, why bother getting vaccinated? That's what I'm concerned about. That's the caveat to this tremendously great information that Pfizer and Merck overseas have developed these new uh, oral medications. We cannot let it stop people from getting vaccinated in the first place because we think they think the drug may save their lives. So why bother getting vaccinated? Our guest again tonight, again with our thanks for taking our questions, Dr. Erwin Redliner. Greatly appreciate it.